Good morning. Previously, you published a video that China is aggressively building out their robotics industry. They're adopting robotics at the fastest rate in the world, even though they have low-cost labor compared to Western economies. The reason they're doing so is to automate work around the world. They hope to replace millions of jobs in North America and Europe with robots that are made here. Remember that they already have supply chain monopolies for almost everything that is needed to build robots. This is particularly true when it comes to magnets, rare earth metals, soft metals, and plastics. So China is already way ahead of the rest of the world when it comes to manufacturing robots. Shanghai just announced a new training ground for robots. Shanghai itself has several large areas already devoted to robotics. So does Beijing and a bunch of other cities. And the news from Shanghai is a good lesson on how China organizes its industries and how they cluster companies together working in the same industry so that they can see breakthroughs happen faster. This is called the spillover effect in economics. It's how knowledge can spread quickly as similar businesses and industries are concentrated and tens of thousands of people are working in proximity on similar projects and with similar knowledge. What is also helping them now is a big advancement, big improvements in large language model AI systems. China already claims that their AI models for LLMs are already at par with the best ones from Silicon Valley. And this is a critical feature for the development of robots. The ability of robots to understand spoken and written instructions to do specific tasks and also to perform general tasks. A specific task for a robot working in a restaurant, for example, might be to take this tray to that table. That's a specific task. A general task would be clean up that table over there. It's a menu of specific tasks that need to be performed, guided by sensory inputs fed to the machine in real time. That's what's hard, a quantum leap in machine learning and in motor skills. And Chinese companies are working on that in a lot of industries and in a lot of careers at the same time. This university of robots, training a thousand robots at a time by 2027, beginning with 100. The focus for these is general scenario training. The potential is huge in industries, rehabilitation, home services. For just those, they're working on building robots that will replace workers making six figures or more in the United States. Home health aides, factory labor, careers like that. There are severe shortages of people to work in those industries now. And so China will build them. But first they need to train the robots how to do the work, train the robots how to understand what they need to do. So this illustrates the Chinese approach to the clustering problem. There are 350 artificial intelligence companies in Shanghai already. And these are big companies with $54 billion in revenues growing at 60% per year for the past five years. By next year, Shanghai is gonna have 10 major robot brands with 100 robotics applications with big export targets on those too. That's about $16 billion or so just out of this Shanghai park. In this particular area is where 150 of those 350 AI companies are located. 5,000 workers, 40 industrial chain companies are there too focusing on general purpose and industrial robotics and incorporating artificial intelligence. In the US, by contrast, our clustering took place over time, over decades, sort of by trial and error and by accident. It wasn't a deliberate government policy or plan that made Silicon Valley, for example. It was a bunch of Stanford and California grads who were living there and were working on semiconductors. Hollywood happened sort of by accident too. The entertainment industry was in New York at the beginning, and over time it just shifted. In China, they did not have decades to let things unfold on their own over time. They clustered companies and industries very deliberately, and they still are. There's also a difference in how 
Western economies and the Chinese one use AI in industry. In the United States, AI is famously being used by companies like Amazon to predict buyer behavior and have products ready when the buyer wants it. We also use AI in generating creative content like videos and graphics and music, cartoons. It's why journalists and musicians and artists are so worried what AI is doing in their industries. But except for people in the industries adversely affected by AI, nobody's really paying attention. People should be paying closer attention to what China's doing with AI. They're not using large language models to develop scripts and cartoons. They're using LLMs to build robot architects and miners and pharmacologists and surgeons and boat pilots and nurses. A Chinese nurse makes about $18,000 per year. An American nurse makes over $100,000 a year. So a Chinese built robot that can do the work of two full-time nurses is worth millions of dollars. Five years ago, nobody in the creatives industry would have imagined that AI would be coming for their jobs. Five years from now, the combination of robotics and AI will coming for lots of other jobs too. Robots will be made in China, put to work everywhere else, and it won't matter what the tariffs against these robots are. Make the tariffs 100% or 200, and companies and factories and mines and shipyards and hospitals are still going to be installing them anyway. This is Shanghai again. Be good. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth.